it's important to surround yourself with friends yeah like true friendships in this industry i think it's one of the most important things that you can do and that's all that matters that's all that why matters. would we do these early calls why would we stand in the rain and shoot that thing if we're not worth people we like around us exactly it's so important i am always excited but i say this every episode but i'm extremely 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 excited mm -hmm. because one of my best friends is here Yay. and it's not Haley. it's anna goodbrands who is an icelandic dp living in london we have known each other for seven or eight years now and i have been staying with her this past week this is our last day together before i see her next time in la and so what what a great opportunity we have to sit down again in London and, and talk about all things DPing in the London market, but also just like your experience, Anna. Hi. Hello. How are you? Oh, good. I'm so happy to hear your voice on this. Oh, this is going to be great. It's going to be great. I can't can't wait to launch into it. I know. I'm exactly. So happy to be here as well. Yeah, I know. This is going to be Camden. great. Yes, I know. In Camden, of all places. Um, the one place I stayed before I... Before I this is my only, my second time in London. And the first time I was here, we stayed in Camden, me and my boyfriend at the time. So I'm really happy to be um, overriding all of those memories of Camden mm -hmm. with the one I'm making with you today. So. Um, but Anna, this is great. So you're Icelandic, but I think we talked about this and now you are two decades here in London. Yeah. And how did you decide, let's start from like the beginning here, Iceland to London. What was that decision? Um, I, it's a bit of a backstory. So I grew up, I was born in Iceland, grew up in Germany, then I moved back to Iceland. Um, and then when I was a teenager, I was obsessed with London and New York actually, but I was kind of, and then when it came to choosing my art college, um, I chose London and I went to Central St. Martins. Um, and I came over for that foundation degree, graphic design degree, and yeah, and then I'm here. I stayed. Oh my god! And um, the the thing that I find interesting is, like you said, graphic design. You didn't start in film. No, it's I didn't start in film. It's um, but on the graphic design degree, I did film. If oh, that makes sense. It's a bit random. So it was called BA graphic design, but there was pathways, and my pathway was illustration. Mm -hmm. But I did a lot of film, photography, and animation. Interesting. Yeah. So okay. actually, I was doing film, but even though it's like a complete, yeah. you know, I didn't do any graphic design on this course, basically. Um, so I just did like film photography Amazing. on it. Yeah. And you also painted. That's right. Paint, print, um, yeah, a lot of screen printing mm -hmm. as well, which was really cool. Oh, that's like cool. A, yeah, and a lot of a lot of photography. We had like free access to a photography studio. Oh wow! So we would just go in there and go in the dark rooms and just constantly, yeah, play around with film. So it was all film. Um, yeah. No digital or anything like that. So it was all film. So we would do our photo shoots, um, both for projects and sometimes just. It's amazing. Photo shoots, <laughs> and then we just were me and my friend JB were always always in the dark room. Like really vampires basically i love yeah. that oh it's so like it's like romanticizing everything i think about like a london art college for yeah. some reason it really was because it was at the campus in uh holborn okay. and they are not there anymore they're in king's cross now but um yeah it was just it was like the ultimate art college like even the building and everything and then just yeah the dark room chemical smells and like oh it's nice the what they were teaching you because it was like your own version of interpretation of film but you were like heavily involved obviously and in still understanding lighting and shadow yeah completely um and i think because i've been doing that for so long it's become it becomes second nature mm -hmm. as well with that um, and even before that when i was a teenager in iceland my mom bought me a camera like a snapshot camera when i was 15 and since then, I've been documenting my life just with like snapshots and everything. Yeah, you're like that. really good at it. Like, you're really good at remembering to take the photos without interrupting a moment to take mm. the photo. With that one, I'm glad. To, thank you. Glad to hear you say yeah, that. Of course, you're welcome. It's something I've been doing for ages. And yeah, it becomes again like second nature because in my house, there's like albums after albums um, of fun moments and embarrassing teenage moments, I'm sure. But it's just so nice to have that. Um, and then I also was always with a camcorder mm -hmm. as well. Always, I always carried it with me, like documenting everything. Um, so I have 
and many tapes as well. So again, that with the photography um, at St. Martin's is, is something that becomes, yeah, second nature and it's hard to almost quantify, but you know, like the light and shadow and moments and angles and everything like that. It's just because when you've been doing it for so long, um, yeah, yeah. it becomes innate. Yeah, that's awesome. And you're like me where you've never worked in your home country. Yeah, that's right. I have people always come like, oh, do you know so-and-so? And I'm like, I... <laughs> You're like, Iceland who? Film, what film industry have I not worked in there? Yeah, I know. Mm. And I've never worked in the Canadian market, really. So It's crazy, isn't it? When I people know. ask you that, and you're like, oh, I don't actually... I mean, I feel like maybe we should. We probably <laughs> should eventually. We'll get there. Yeah, we'll get there. We'll first work on moving to the same place yeah. so we can, we exactly. can work together at yeah. something, but... No, that's great. And then that is also, is is that the same program where you met Monica? No, that came later. So then a few years later, I did a master's at Central St. Martin's in Fine Art. Um, and then another master's in cinematography. Mm. Um, and that's where I met Monica. Okay. Yeah. And how would, how do we want to define Monica? So Monica is a director on my master's in filmmaking. Um, so there was again like a directing pathway, um, cinematography pathway, sound, things like that. Um, and we did our graduation film together, me and Monica. She now lives in Mexico City. Uh, I live here. Um, yeah, that's how we met. Okay, amazing. And it's kind of incredible, actually. We should we'll link her below because her work is is amazing. Yeah, and she's really taking off. And she's really taking off in like Mexico City. Monica Gonzalez Carter. So link yeah. her, link her and. Yeah, she's doing super cool stuff there. Yeah. So what, okay, cinematography. Mm -hmm. How did you decide on that and not directing or production design or art or whatever it is? Well, it sort of took me a little while to come to this because I think, um, you know, growing up in a basically Arctic town um, a while ago before things like social media, you know, everything like that, um, I wasn't really aware that cinematography was a thing. You know what I mean? You just kind of think... It's just directing. You don't really have an understanding on it of it. Um, so I went into, into art essentially. Uh, even though I was always doing film and photography, but in a very different way. Um, and sort of, I think for cinematography, the knowledge that that was actually a job um, mm -hmm. kind of found me at the right time. Because um, I don't think I necessarily would have been in a place to do that when I was much younger. You know what I mean? So I think it came at. Um, a really good time um and i decided i was just like oh god it's kind of found it and i'm like oh my god like this is exactly what i've been wanting to do but i didn't have a word for it yeah. you know because i didn't know the definition of this um so yeah that's sort of how it came to be it's amazing yeah. and i want to talk about one specific painting that i'm obsessed with of yours yeah. that you still have that i want i know we're gonna get it to my house someday yep. in la but um this this painting what when you were painting, mm -hmm. what? how would you describe your style? Because I feel like there might be some sort of overlap in the idea of shadow there. Yeah, I think so. A lot of um, my paintings, it wasn't really actually with a paintbrush or anything. A lot of it was sort of prints and it was very sort of block colors as well. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, very much using well, the, like just black paints, essentially, yeah. like, which again is like it's the black space and the like the negative, the, the and negative the, space, yeah. which is like a light and shadow. It is a light so, and shadow. I yeah. mean, and it and yeah, I have to like find that photo you sent me and link it below as well because it's just like a really beautiful, interesting piece. Yeah, um, it's huge as well. It's like huge. we will get it there. We need to get it to my place. I know, and I think I even like I used some sort of scrapey thing for it. So I know, like I think it was just I don't know, like a cardboard or something. I don't yeah, know, yeah, as like yeah. a paintbrush. So and I just kind of. Wow. Yeah, went for it. Because Anna is someone that a lot of people, including myself, go to inspiration for in her work because, Aww. but it's true, um, because she's always experimenting, whether it be in format or filtration or like fucking up with lighting or putting your long nails in front of the light while mm -hmm. shooting. Um, you're always trying something new. And I feel like because of your background, experimenting in different, um, whether it be the dark room or painting or screen printing, whatever it is, that's probably affected your had like an impact on your work now yeah i would say that it's actually so interesting because you know you just kind of do stuff so it's really interesting to hear you say that mm -hmm. because you again when you do things you just like do it i don't know you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? you yeah. just kind of do it but you're very right there's always been 
it was very natural for me to approach things with um, an experimental eye, even if I'm doing something like a simple beauty shoot. You know what yeah. I mean? There's even if it's something. like commercial where people would hear commercial and be like, okay, so it needs to be clean with these lenses, mm. with this stop and this thing. Instead, you're going like, yeah, I know it's supposed to be clean, but it can be clean and also this. Exactly. Yeah. So you can do that. It's like interesting ways to, you can do things and bring yourself and your personality and your creative eye in so many different ways it doesn't have to be something super crazy you know but it can also be something simple as in like i did a shoot um for christian dior a couple of weeks ago and we used really nice beautiful um master primes really like nice and clean but then adding glimmer glass and have a glimmer glass in front which just kind of i found i amplified that like it looked still clean crisp and beautiful but with like a nice beautiful softness and personality so you can do things in that way as well yeah you can test yeah yeah and um and what what are the things i also admire is like you're a technical dp but you don't you never get bogged down in the technical no i don't really like to get bogged down so much in the technical it's important to have knowledge yeah um but also we are lucky in this job to be surrounded by really skilled people um yeah with our lighting people with our camera assistants yes. um so we're very supported. So I think while it's important to have good technical knowledge, I think um, it's still a collaboration amongst everybody and it's important to lean on each other yeah. for that and not be dictated completely by technology. Um, That's great. Yeah. And yeah, there are two like main things that because I know you so well that I wanted to talk about. Um, obviously, your work fits into all of this, but one is working with talent because that's what Mm -hmm. we talk a lot about on this podcast is working with talent collaboration what you just picked up on but also the networking aspect because you and I share a bond over networking Mm -hmm. and our love for it and um and not seeing it as something negative and not seeing it as something um that that is in any way complicated Mm -hmm. and so I think let's let's lean into that first and we can wrap with the the talent stuff because I think I love talking about networking and not enough people understand how beautiful our industry really yeah. is. So who was one of the first people you met? Let's start with that in, in our industry. Oh, in our industry. Um, that's, you know, actually this actually comes back to going to Camry Maj okay. Film Festival. Interestingly yeah. enough. And we should say that, so Camry Maj is a film festival that I, I've mentioned a few times on here. Um, but it is a cinematography film festival in Poland that happens every year in the month of November mm-hmm. where everyone you know goes to this small rural town in Poland um, that does not have an airport in it. So you have to fly in, show your dedication and then bus or taxi in. And then you spend like seven to nine days with everyone, um, with vendors, with the support we just talked about and uh, and catch up, but also learn. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So your first year at Camry Maj was what year? It was 2015. Okay. And uh, how did you hear about it? I actually heard about it through um, my film course. Oh, yeah. Same. Interestingly enough. Oh, really? As well? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it's very interesting, actually. It's because um, we were like, what is that? And then, I mean, it just opened up such a world um, of, honestly, like friendships. Mm-hmm. And you were actually one of the first people. That is yeah, insane. That I met, like you, Patello, Nick Sandler, you know what I mean? It's like, that's like, crazy the, the core people, the core and yeah, the same core much. people which exactly. is crazy yeah. yeah wow yeah and who did you go with monica um yes yeah she came with me um for one year i think um i think uh it's interesting for directors to go to camera march because obviously they're <laughs> highly outnumbered which is fun dps and it's a I great think opportunity yeah exactly. because you're not ever no one cares if no. you're a director they you come and you're great you're a director but yeah. you're also like now a part of the camry maj club yeah. like so it's it's you're never going to be feeling like overwhelmed i think no yeah. i think so i think um you're well supported because it's such a nice vibe it's just important to surround yourself with friends, yeah. like true friendships in this industry. Yeah. I think it's one of the most important things that you can do. And that's all that matters. That's all that Why matters. would we do these early calls? Why would we stand in the rain and shoot that thing if we're not with people we like around us? Exactly. It's so important. Like, absolutely. Because this job is wonderful and I love it. But obviously, this is not, um, I don't think, considered by anyone to be an easy job. So yeah. I think it's um, important to have people around you that support you, like, 
and like really have your back and, and really see your journey and see your journey exactly yeah. it's like it's yeah it's like really good to find your people in this industry it's so important i would absolutely say do you, do you remember the first time we met i it was in in camera much in front of the hawk was it in front of the hawk booth, Amazing. actually yeah. I remember wow. it. yeah so i became friends with anna initially for a not authentic <laughs> honest reason it was because i was interested in dating one of um her friends mm-hmm. who was hanging around her the whole time and so i became friends with her so i could get to him <laughs> Um, but then we became best friends instead. Hey. It worked out um <laughs> seven years later because you're just much cooler. Um but uh but I just remember like you are so approachable and so sweet and you can like be very scary if you aren't <laughs> if you're like focused on something else or like focus deep on a conversation yeah. or like just trying to get somewhere to do something, you can look terrifying. But um, not at, on purpose. Yeah, I know. But at the time you were I think in a great mood and I probably served you guys champagne at the hawk booth. Or yeah, something. I think it was something like that. Yeah. I would say for you as well, you're so approachable and I was just like, Yeah, there's, there's a vibe. A, there's a vibe. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. exactly. We got a vibe, yeah. guys. Um but yeah, Camry Monch, the first year, what did you expect versus what actually happened? I had no idea what to expect whatsoever. I just was like, yeah, I'm just going to go and just see. I don't know. That's kind of like me as well. I just kind of like go for stuff and yeah. don't sort of, you know what I mean? And I, like experiences, it's just open to new experiences and just go, oh, yeah, go for it. Let's see yeah. what happens. So I didn't really know what to expect at all, actually. Because, um, you know, it was kind of explained to me, but until you're there, it's hard to... Um, properly kind of put your finger on it yeah but it was just yeah it was just amazing and again i just keep coming back to the friendships honestly it's just um one i think one of the best aspects as well of going to something like that um is to build up friendships and, yeah and, and the party trenches yeah camera Mars. I, exactly yeah it's a test <laughs> yeah. um what how how did you learn to network was there a learning process how what's your technique like what like, uh, how do you go up to people if someone was new to camera yeah. or new to networking or new to the industry yeah what do you say is like just do it like but what it's, is it it that's really difficult for me to explain because i literally just go up and talk to people yeah just yeah that's that's it yeah i don't have any sort of agenda or anything like that i'm just interested in people and yeah. what they have to say yeah um and their lives and their journeys and I enjoy talking to people. It's literally, it's just like, I like talking to people and I make, like making friends. And that's sort of how I approach it. Cause I just. What yeah. I like also, I think, and I can probably define your technique a little. Mm-hmm. Cause I think like now it's natural, yeah. but like, I think there is something that you do that people are really like drawn to. Um, and that's that you don't just focus on film, which is what I do yeah. too. It's like, I like hearing about people's life, their wife, their husband, yeah. what their hobbies are, what they just got up to, where they're traveling, what they recommend. Um, but also you carry around a deck of tarot cards. <laughs> That's true. It's true. It's I've true. Got them, I've got them in my bag right now. Do you actually? <laughs> actually you, you have to do my reading later. Yeah, but, no. <laughs> um, over Indian food. But, yeah. you, but you do. And so you will literally sit there with some of the top you know, you just like people, but you'll yeah. be sitting there with like some of the top DPs in our industry, the top like company owners. Um, and they'll be like, Oh yeah, I've never had my tarot read. Like I might as well. Yeah, go for it. And so then you kind of have this bond with them because you're providing something a little different to the conversation. Yeah. It's like, I, I love the tarot aspect actually. It's so interesting. They brought that up. Mm-hmm. Uh, also I enjoy reading cards and I think it's just like, it's a nice way to bond and it's just, it's interesting. And I think, I honestly would much rather talk to people, do their tarot cards, talk to people about cats rather than anyone's job or yeah. film or anything like that. I just, yeah. Like I that's just, like, the, it's like almost like the surface level conversation is like, cool, what's new in the market? Like, what what are you excited about? But then like actually just getting into the personality of like yeah. the depths of who they are and exactly. I guess their tarot readings and what questions they have. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, surface. <laughs> I literally talk about you and I have to people and I'm just like, she's a genius. People get free tarot readings out of knowing her. Uh, this is the way of, this is the way of doing it. Yeah. Um, but it's also just like a very authentic way of presenting yourself. Cause you're not trying to be like, Oh, I'm this DP in London. You're like, Hey, no. how's it going? Like, I'm just like got Anna. my tarot cards in my bag. Exactly. Like, yeah. I'm just like, I'm Anna. Yeah, I like film. I like cats. Yeah. Do you want a reading? Yeah. Do you, do you want a tarot reading? Um, yeah. So I don't know how not to be authentic. I honestly, I just, I. That's great. It just what you see is what you get. Yeah. Are you much. ever feeling awkward? Um, I always joke that I feel like um, I think I embraced my awkwardness a long time ago. Um, and now I just, yeah, you just 
embrace it and you're like, yeah, cool. Yeah. This is me and that's it. And yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I think like, I suppose, honestly, I think like a lot of creative people have like a natural awkwardness about them. You know what I mean? Or within, I think as an artsy kid, you, I think it's just a part of it. Um, yeah. But I do think it's important to embrace it and just accept that as your part, your personality. But I mean, so I suppose that I embrace my awkwardness, but I don't really ever feel like, like, or, you know what I mean? I suppose yeah. like the normal definition of the word. Yeah. I mean. You don't feel out of place. No, I don't feel out of place. Exactly. And I always say to people, I'm like, the best part about our networking events is like, it's not like you're, I don't do well at house parties talking to people because I don't know what anyone's interested in. The best part about our industry is that you're going and everyone's interested in the same thing to begin with, which yeah. is film so at least you have one thing to talk about to get it started exactly and if they're standing around a lens booth you can talk about lens. like i mean it's just like you yeah. have some sort of thorough language you can start on you exactly because I mean? like you're yeah, talking about awkwardness like, yeah if i'm at a house party it was like people i cannot connect to absolutely i feel awkward because i'm just like yeah okay i'm just gonna be in this corner yeah, I don't know. yeah. <laughs> i'm just like yeah. i know <laughs> but it's like a different type of or i think there's like variations of i suppose yeah yeah exactly yeah. of what everyone feels versus like the out of placeness yeah amongst it all yeah what makes me sort of drawn to people drawn to people i would say is an openness and honesty and being able to just have like good authentic conversations that's, and say yes to things yeah and say yes to things and yeah. be like yeah do you want to do this yeah cool hey you know yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. you know what i mean like yeah i think that's that kind of sort of honest openness um and willing to yeah participate in things and goes be far yeah it goes far i think that's my favorite quality in people yeah. what's uh just for fun what's like a favorite memory of yours from camera image ever oh my god that i str i'll struggle with because there's so many do you have one that you can talk about uh, hang on i mean they're like all this they're like moments you yeah. know what i mean there's like moments on the dance floor like especially one in big gosh you know that like the yeah. club with a disco floor or whatever you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? yeah. it's like i think for me it's more like snippets of memories you know what i mean it's yeah. kind of like that you've kind of feel you know what i mean yeah. like the reason like, you keep going back yeah and just like like the laughter just like fun like i don't know yes it's like and have you ever gotten work out of camera Maj? um no i don't think so maybe i don't know maybe by some roundabout way but i don't really go there in order to get work good i don't yeah, you yeah. know what i mean i go there literally to like, build a network and continue to have relationships with people yeah like catch up with people because like, we also because like we live all over the world yeah everybody lives everywhere you know so this is like one time of year that you can really catch up with your friends from yeah. all over the world um and that's the sort of most important thing to me so that's why i go there um meet new friends um see films if you have time you know yeah <laughs> and if someone listening to this was like considering going to camera image next year mm -hmm. first time ever what would you recommend they do um, talk to people. Talk to people. Honestly, just chat to people, be out and about, introduce yourself to people. Um, yeah, build, start building friendships. Become the familiar face. Yeah, and I think because it's so important because it's like, this is not an industry that you want to feel alone in. And I think it's so important to like, let people know that you exist, essentially. Mm -hmm. People need to know that you exist. Um, and then also yeah build up a nice network of like good friendships that's just so important your life will be a lot better for it yeah and okay so Lon back to london mm -hmm. what's the london market like the london market is very interesting there's so there's, it's very very busy of pretty much every single type of work that you can imagine narrative commercial music video branded content yeah. tvc yeah everything essentially um there's of, of course many markets within the uk um but i would say yeah this is like the variety of work here it's it's huge, like bigger than you can even imagine. And how do you enter that market? How was your, what was your entrance into the market? Um, into, I mean, so after I graduated, um, I was doing sort of music videos. You know what I mean? I bought myself a camera. Um, what camera? It was an A7S II. Okay, lenses. Uh, I put vintage lenses on it with adapters. Got it. Yeah and filters of course mm -hmm. <laughs> did you make your own filters um sometimes mm -hmm. yeah sometimes they own i have like a little secret box um Ooh. yeah a secret box of filters that um comes with me on jobs and um and i've been building that box up for years wow so years and years That's as fun. well yeah so it's like it's there and it's like stays with me i don't 
Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I didn't know that. That's fun. Yeah. It's like, a, I mean, I actually have like a huge box in my little cupboard, but yeah. I have like a little travel box that's actually like a lunch box, but it was the best size to that's fit so in my That's so fun. I love that. <laughs> and it's got a little shape of a little yeah. fork. Um, yeah. So I actually started um, doing like things, um, fashion videos, like music videos, while also working alongside it in lighting. And where were you getting those contacts to work? I, one of the first ones, actually, this is like, because you never know where things come from. Yeah. That's what's interesting about it. And um, one of the first music videos I did, and I did like a web series as well, was actually the first AD on my student film. Oh. Actually then was directing as well. Amazing. And so it's just like, it's the thing, you don't know who's doing what on set, especially when you start out. Like the first AD might also be starting to direct or, you know, or vice versa or anything like that. So um, that's why it's also very important to work hard, treat everybody well, give a good impression, mm-hmm. um, which goes without saying, but it's important. It should be said all the time but on repeat. Really be said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, that's sort of how it started. And then somebody sees your work and then it kind of just grows from there. And then somebody knows somebody. And then word of mouth is um, very powerful in this industry. And um, especially when you start, it's important to work a lot. I think this takes take lots of different projects find out what you like you kind of start to develop your style as well yeah and okay so fashion music video how much were you using that camera that you bought i you know in the beginning i was using that a lot actually um that i mean this camera has now been sold uh, quite a while ago but um but it was a really handy tool especially when you start like Having no. something to shoot on if there's really yeah. no money. It's like Exactly. Yeah. And like and use what you want to do is it's like shoot. You know, you want to show people what you can do. And if you have the ability to have your own camera, um again, it doesn't have to be some fancy expensive thing. You know what I mean? It's because you know, you can does it record, does it look good? You know what I mean? And then you can put your own stuff out there. Um and I use that thing loads sometimes yeah, on so many bits and um yeah, so I would think that's one good thing, I think, if somebody's starting out to do that. Yeah, just have like a, not a throwaway camera, but a camera where eventually you know it's not going to be the thing that you're renting out, but it got you your legs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so entering into fashion, music video, mm. the contacts that you had early on, the people like the AD that was directing, yeah. are you still working with those people? Um, Not, not everybody, no. I think people... Um, eventually go you know into maybe different directions um yeah but you know some people you know have sort of continued you know i'm doing um, a short film in the new year with somebody i met quite a while ago um so yeah some some yes some some less so but i think that's just what happens you know what i mean it's like the nature of it yeah do you think that because in la i feel like just like actors there is like a flux of the people who work in film versus are like, I can't do this anymore. I'm getting yeah. out of film. Do you think in the UK or in London that people are, because there's so much work, mm-hmm. people are staying in film longer? Or do you think it's the same where it's like, there is people that you're like, that person is just not working in film anymore. Yeah. It, I mean, I think people do stay, but I think also, I think you really have to be very committed to wanting to be a TP because it's not an easy road. Um, and, it's like you kind of have to be very passionate about it. Yeah. Um, I would say, um, because it's you know it's it's um, it's a lot. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a lot. It's very enjoyable, but I think um, it's definitely something that needs a certain amount of commitment. And I do actually find that um, a lot of people stay on that road. Um, however, sometimes also people maybe try it and they're like, you know what? I'd much rather be a gaffer or you know or i much rather be a director or Mm -hmm. and they just find themselves in different roles because they prefer it um so i think often people go between roles because they're like you know what like this is what i studied but i actually love doing this yeah and i think that's often the sort of flux can you talk about your crew breakdown at the moment like because you and i always talk about operators and things like Mm -hmm. this but can you talk about the people that you normally have with you on set what's typical because okay. yeah. you're doing and, and talk about the type of work you're doing obviously yeah. as well so I do um, mostly commercials mm-hmm. music videos fashion some yeah. documentary more like sort of um, sort of creative lifestyle sort of documentaries rather than um, historical or you know yeah. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, she's the Queen Mary over yeah. here yeah. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> um, 
So on on my sets, like a normal just like I said, so I would be, I would usually be operating the camera. Um, then it would be a focus puller, a second AC, sometimes a trainee as well. And you have your gaffer or, and however many sparks the project basically needs. Yeah. Um, so that's my sort of normal crew setup. Um, then obviously when you go into different territories, sometimes you have your Steadicams, like I did a job, uh, the Christian Dior job, we had um, four Steadicam operators and with every operator there was um, like a focus puller, a second AC, you know, so things kind of grow out, but that's the sort of core Essentially. Yeah, operators handheld. Do you ever have an mm-hmm. operator for handheld? Very, very rarely. It's always me. I mean, I mean, in the UK, operators are. I think obviously there is operators, but I think uh, compared to the US market, I think that's it's a lot more common to have operators on most shoots. If I'm right in thinking, in the states. Yeah, in the states yeah. I mean, I think there's more of a push for it. Like, yeah. I think I can argue it more on my sets than it seems like people here could. Yeah, I, it does definitely feel like it. Um, I mean, I love operating. Um, I'm quite particular with my handheld operating as well. To sort of, I'm very precise in general about my lighting, my operating, everything mm-hmm. to a sort of quite an extreme point. Get rid of those shadows. shadows. You know? yeah. <laughs> but, um, but I do actually, it's very interesting to work with an operator as well because I think also operators bring their creativity to the project, mm-hmm. which then everybody's creativity then heightens the project so i enjoy also working with an operator a lot um yeah you want to give people the creative freedom and then you know when everybody's just together like good vibes everyone feels like they're comfortable enough to be creative creates ultimately a better commercial or project whichever project that is yeah what we really want to hear i think as well is it, from everyone we have on the show is how they work with talent, what mm. they've noticed, your relationships with your directors. How do your directors involve themselves with talent versus what kind of input do you have on a daily basis with them? So can you talk about um, a little bit about your experience working with talent on commercials, music videos, whatever it is? Yeah, totally. It's interesting. Also, it very much depends on the director. Um, sometimes on some shoots, it's... Um, maybe like I was doing um, a commercial where it was, I was the closest person to the actor and it was like, we had to do like a sort of box, you know, for lighting and, you know, background things like that. So I was the closest person. And uh, then in that case, it was, um, I sort of was an arm of the director in a weird way. You know what I mean? So it's just like, so because I was in this, I mean, it's not an actual box, but you know, yeah, (laughs) sort of, box <laughs> thing, you know what I mean yeah, yeah. Um, with the actors so I was kind of you know what I mean so uh, some questions and things like that came to me mm-hmm. um but the director was comfortable with that um some directors are prefer to everything to come through them yeah um so in which case then I have suggestions to the director that then they feed to the talent um it's it's very much it sort of depends um I would say, but in certain circumstances, you literally are the closest person and you, and if you feel like you can uh, chat to the director and go between and be like, okay, would you be comfortable for me to, because I'm closest there, you know what I mean? Am I okay to guide them a little bit as well? And director says yes, then you know what I mean? You, yeah. you sort of go for that. Do you have directors saying no? Um, no, that's actually never happened. Okay, good. <laughs> to be honest, it's <laughs> really... actually never happened. Yeah. Um, but you sort of, the more you do this, you kind of just, you gauge the situation. You know yeah. what I mean? You can feel who is, you if can they eat. need that control or yeah. if they can release it a little exactly. let you get it get yeah. in there. Yeah. And I think sometimes for the talent, I think it's um interesting as well to have a relationship with the cinematographer. Because mm-hmm. um, again, you are so close. You know, say if it's like a video, like a fashion video, you're like right here. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very so, close to the lens. Yeah. yeah. So it's something it's like a it becomes like a relationship between like the model or actor, you know, and you, especially if you're doing handheld and yeah. like that. Um how are you giving your technical notes? Um, how specific do you get versus how emotional are you? Like, what what are the cues as a DP that you're telling actors? To okay, yeah, to the actors. Um, while I'm shooting, mm-hmm. um, it's usually no. I'm not usually like a hugely technical note person. Um, I because also it depends on how familiar the talent is. It's like oh, we're on eighty five, and some people are just like um, 
You know what I mean? So it's like maybe not overly helpful for the talent if you start to going into some tech speak that yeah. some people are aware of him, some people just are really not. So I don't really think that's overly helpful sometimes, you know? So I do, I work more on emotion, feeling, um, and sort of relay what they need to do in that way. Yeah. Um, and sometimes, especially with fashion, it's as simple as it's like, you know, come a bit closer to the camera, you know what I mean? Yeah. Start looking up, you know, and things like that. And you... You often go like, okay, I'm going to go to just even telling people where, where you're going. You know what I mean? If you're doing handheld and you're feeling your way through the shoot, I think it's helpful for the talent to know, okay, I'm going to start going around, keep looking to the camera, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. So um, it's more like feeling and simple direction based rather than I sort of stay away from overly techie speak because yeah. it can confuse the people that don't know. Yeah, exactly. Um. Let's talk about the actors that do understand that they're on an 85. Yeah. What does that look like? Has it happened to you? Can you talk a bit about it? Um, it's again, like I think this is why also what you're doing is so helpful um, for Thank you. talent. It really is because it's like, because you're the one on camera, you know, so it's really good to like you, you know, the talent, you know, like yeah. talent is the one on camera. It's just so handy because they know, for instance, if they're on an 85, it's a very tight lens. They... You know, and for some reason we have to be on an 85, and you know what I mean, for whatever, whichever creative reason that might be. Um, it's good for them to know what that means because that obviously means less movement, you know, things like that. It's like if it's a, if you're wide open on an 85, you don't, don't really, move at all, kind it, of. Yeah, yeah, kind of. Or vibes. slowly, yeah. yeah. Or slowly or things like that. So I do think it's um, when people know about that, they kind of like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm on this lens and be like, yeah, okay. So people sort of, you work together with the talent. Um, and they're aware that like, I think it's good for the talent as well to be like, to know like, okay, I can move this much. I can do this. Yeah. You know, and things like that. So do you have an example of um, an actor that you don't need to name drop, but um, you can, if you want, um, <laughs> about an actor who did understand that or any technical notes that mm -hmm. you could tell, like they, they really got it either where the light was, the eye line, yeah. working with operators, whatever it is. I think definitely it's very interesting to work with very experienced actors because, again, it's that sort of instinct. Mm -hmm. It's like you don't even know where it comes from anymore. It's just experience. And people are like, okay, how tight are we? This kind of stuff. And they, it's like they feel, they feel, again, their way through it. They see their like, They feel their like, They know. It becomes second nature. Um, and I think, yeah, it's very, very experienced people. That's it's like, I love seeing it because, you know, it's just so amazing you know well, what it I mean? makes them it makes talent a part of the collaborative process yeah exactly and it's just yeah i just think it's a really beautiful moment because it's like it's like an ultimate collaboration between like camera light talent it's just like it becomes this it takes on a life of its own and it's really it's kind of magical yeah when it happens it's difficult to quantify but it's like again like everybody is just feeling things yeah. <laughs> because <laughs> it's so feeling things. innate to yeah. everybody that it just becomes this like yeah yeah it's amazing yeah so narrative work that mm -hmm. you've done um have you ever had scenes where you've had experienced and inexperienced actors in the same room yeah for sure what does that look like for a dp um i think it's good to be aware of it because sometimes if somebody's maybe new to the scene there can be nerves mm -hmm. involved and i think it's important for us to be aware of that and um not just kind of throw people into it you know what I mean I think it's because already like if the person is maybe a bit nervous is like you know don't want to drown in some weird techie speak of being you know what I mean yeah. being sort of overly overbearing so I think it's important just to be aware of what people are feeling um, yeah and then you know so again like this very much depends on the person you know you can kind of feel like okay that maybe that that's why I think it's so important just to be so aware of everything on set because you can kind of like and use your instinct to be like okay I think this person needs you know a little, a little help here little help or here. less help here yeah exactly and just and communicate that mm -hmm. and make sure that they're comfortable um and sometimes the, you know if it's one experienced actor or one maybe less so they also yeah. support each other but i think it's important for the cinematographer to be aware of that um and just help them make sure that they're comfortable which again creates better better work for everybody yeah exactly mm. the um and what i what i really admire about you um is your um your spirituality mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I think something that isn't discussed enough, I mean, mental health is discussed within film, but one of the things that really isn't is um, knowing your worth. Yeah. I mean, we talked about authenticity earlier. Yeah. But knowing your worth in terms of understanding what you'll work for. Yeah. What your boundaries are. Yeah. Can you talk about um, how you really work within that headspace? So understanding how you set your boundaries on set Mm -hmm. or when you're getting an email from a producer or um, knowing the progression of rates and or crew rates, what that what that looks like for a DP on the rise. Yeah, Um, it's an interesting I think boundaries are very important and again this is something that comes very much with experience um but i do think it's also be important to be aware of it early on um obviously when you start out you know what i mean sometimes the rates aren't great and things like that but it's important to be like to know because you get to a certain place you're like no like my experience is worth this amount um and sort of know that what you can bring to the table in which case i mean i've I've been sort of quite lucky with that you know what I mean I, I don't really feel like um I've had many experiences of people really encroaching on, on yeah. things and that but that certainly happened um and I think this is like it's important yeah just to know your worth like what you bring to the table your skill your talent um and how that is mutually beneficial for everybody um and if there is I mean if kind of take it going away from like money stuff it's like for instance safety on set yeah it's very very important to have boundaries because it does happen that people ask you to do unreasonable things um and again like this now i'm very like boundary but especially again if somebody's listening to this like starting out is to be like you you know what i mean because there is a fear of like if you stand up for yourself you know, it's you're gonna lose. The oh, job am I or, gonna get fired? Uh, yeah, or or they never stuff. gonna hire me again? All or, that kind of stuff. But, but yeah, it's like it's so it's not important. worth it. It's not worth it. It's so important to be safe and boundary. Be like, if you if something's weird, you don't feel comfortable about something. It's so important to speak up about that and be like, yeah, no. Or if you see something happening to your crew or somebody's, you know what I mean, or anything like that. You're the leader of that crew at the end of the day. Exactly, so. you are. So it's just so important to be like, no, okay, just yeah. Which is why it's important to also like work with the people you like. Exactly. And just having strong, clear boundaries. If everybody feels safe and happy. Yeah. Ultimately, it's best for everybody on the project as well. So it's um, it's like owning your shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. And just be like, own your shit. You know you're good at your job. You know what you can bring to the table. Um, You know, just to be strong in yourself. Um, Essentially, that is best for absolutely everybody yeah. as well around you. Yeah. What's the toughest part about working in the the British film industry? Um, the weather. Yeah, <laughs> honestly, <laughs> probably. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. I should have said without saying the weather because obviously, yeah, know, that's a I was nightmare. Say, like, it's like grey and horrible. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Um, apart from the weather, finding contrast <laughs> because it's always overcast outside. Honestly, no joke. It's just like you're like, oh my god, like everything's just like looks the same. You yeah. know what I mean? So. I mean, it helps for turning your world around, you know, you can get the continuity. Grayness. Um, I mean, I think what's difficult in this industry is like the same as everybody everywhere else. Networking, finding the jobs, hustling. I think it's like not unique to this market. I think it's every market is like this. Um, Yeah. I would say, but it's a uh, boring again, answer. You're fired. I'm, I'm just sorry. kidding. No, you're I know fine. it's really boring, but no, 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 no. <laughs> I mean, I just think like from my perspective, I don't know anything about your market. Yeah. And so for people who are listening that maybe, you know, maybe they met a lover and they want to move to London, yeah. but they're DP or yeah. they're in film. What, what can they expect? What's different about the American? What, what do you know? Because you, what do you know? <laughs> what do I know? What do you know? No. What, <laughs> from like spending so much time in LA, what yeah. would you say you see the biggest differences are between the two markets um i would say what i love about la um is people's willingness to help oh right that is a thing we talk about yeah Yeah, it's a really big thing and people help here but i think it's like in la it's like next level you know what i mean because like um it feels very very collaborative like in LA yeah like very collaborative right. you were even talking about the rental houses I think right yeah stuff so like that just it, coming in yeah and I think like it's and I think that's what I really like about that 
particular market. Um, yeah, it's like the collaboration, people, people giving you like chances, wanting to help. Um, probably the sun helps. <laughs> yeah, everyone's <laughs> in a good mood. Yeah. Everyone's in a good mood. No. <laughs> That's true. That's something I really, I think, find really beautiful about your markets. Who yeah. would you say is not right to work in film? Oof. Um, that's a difficult one because I don't really think it's like not right. You know what I mean? I'm a true believer in like everybody is able to do everything that they mm -hmm. want with the right resources. Mm -hmm. So I'm a very sort of hugely positive person in that way. However, I think um, you I think people, I think it's internal, you know, because yeah. I, mean? I think that this job needs a lot of, a lot of dedication, yeah. like a lot. You have to be very passionate yeah. about it. Um, there's going to be a lot of setbacks and a lot of like ups as well. But that's why it's just like you need to have that like absolute drive to keep going. Terrifying. I would say is the most important thing to have, like drive, talent, of course, you know, um, but the drive is very, 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 very important um, because there's a lot of stuff. You can be away a lot from friends and family. You know what I mean? You can be away a lot. The hours are crazy. Like there's like uncertainty. There's all this kind of stuff. You know what I mean? So it's like you need to be very sure of yourself and your drive yeah. um, in order to sort of go for it. Yeah. So I would say that's something important that's to fine. have. And if, yeah. that's, if, that's, if those are sort of sacrifices that... Um, you're comfortable and, and okay with making. Yeah. What are you, and what are you excited about right now? Oh, so many things. I'm very excitable. Yeah. <laughs> as nice. A, as a person. Yeah. To be honest. Yeah. It doesn't take much. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> I That's know. A good vibe. Um, got some cool new projects coming up that I'm really excited about. Um, I'm excited to come to LA soon mm -hmm. as well. Very, very excited about that. Um, we'll have to have you at one of our in-person events. Yay. Yeah. That'll be so yeah, fun. That would be really cool. Where can people find you? Okay. So people can find me. I have a website, mm -hmm. um, Anna Goodbrands com. Maybe put that down there. It's a funny one to spell. Yeah. I will. Icelandic names. Um, and also Anna underscore Iceland DOP on Instagram. Mm -hmm. That's where I lurk. Um, most days yeah be real <laughs> be real yeah. exactly yeah. be ready for the wide angle front lens yeah um that's where i can be found and that's where my all my up-to-date projects are um so i work mostly in short form so um, my stuff is like yeah online in that way and you know the co-star app how it says like in yes. and out, ins and outs yeah can you tell me three things that are in and three things that are out they don't have to be film related Oh my god! What do you mean? Like what? Like trendy? It could no. It could yeah. be like trust is in um, watermelon. Like it could be random things. But okay. what, what in your mind, in your life, says in? What says out right now? Okay. Friendship, trust, beauty, authenticity, um, and instinct is all in. Out is being not nice to people having a bad attitude that's always out especially on set always have a good attitude honestly like yeah <laughs> i would say just good vibes authenticity love friendship always in okay awesome be true to yourself guys yeah <laughs> honestly it's like you can't put a price on it yeah it's, what what else are you life. bringing you to the art. artistry if not yourself so. no honestly that's the thing as well it's just like i think that's why it's so it's important to know yourself and your authenticity because that's something that you can bring to the project um yeah. Completely, yeah. When it's this kind of like strong instinct and authenticity and truth. I think yeah. That's the most important thing to bring to an image is truth. Whatever that might be. A truth to a beautiful bottle of perfume. Yeah. A truth to a narrative. You know, it's all the same. You can always find like the truth and beauty in things. And I think that's the most important thing to bring. I love that. Thank mm. you so much, Anna. <laughs> my my fellow cat lady. Yeah. Um yeah, <laughs> um, and it's been a pleasure having you here. Um, oh, it's been a pleasure being here. I'm so sad that I'm leaving tomorrow. I'm so sad too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we managed to use the sound. <laughs> um, this has been Anna Goodbrands, an Icelandic DP, who is just a super killer DP. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Those sound effects literally have made my day. Wait! Hey, Anna's in the house. <laughs> Isn't it amazing what life brings us? We meet in Poland and now we're in a seven years later. Camden Studio doing a podcast. A podcast. Crazy. I love, I love it. it.